Hey pals, I'm here today to talk about, I think, 13 short story collections that are coming out in the first half of 2022. In the last few years I've repeatedly said I want to get back in the habit of reading a couple of short story collections every month and I've failed spectacularly again. I've only read five short story collections this year although I've really enjoyed I think four out of the five. And so I really want to focus on short story collections. There's a lot of back list I want to get to but I also have, like I said, 13 books here that come in the first half of the year. I think they sound great. If you love short story collections you should definitely have these ones on your radar and if you don't or are unsure if you like them then I hope that at least one of these short story collections will spark your interest and encourage you to give short story collections a go because I think they are truly wonderful. So the first short story collection I'm excited about comes out on the 2nd of January so not long to wait at all and that is Manywhere by Morgan Thomas. I think this is the author's first book and it says this features lush and uncompromising stories about characters crossing geographical borders and gender binaries. We witness southern queer and gender queer characters determined to find themselves reflected in the annals of history, whatever the cost. As Thomas's subjects trace deceit and violence through southern tall tiles and their own pasts, their journeys reveal the porous boundaries of body, land and history, and the sometimes ruthless awakening of self-discovery. And it gives you an example of some of the stories. It says a trans woman finds her independence with the purchase of a pregnancy bump. A young Virginian flees their relationship, choosing instead to immerse themselves in the life of an intersex person from colonial era at Jamestown. A writer tries to evade the violent and murky legacy of an ancestor who supposedly disappeared into a midwifery bag. And in the uncanny title story, a young trans person brings home a replacement daughter for their elderly father. So yeah, I think this sounds super interesting. I really like reading Southern Voices in particular from the US, so this is one I will definitely be picking up. And it's got lots of great reviews already, so I think this is going to be a really strong new voice. The next one I want to talk about sounds great, and I think will be particularly interesting to those of you who are a bit nervous about picking short story collections up, because it is an interconnected group of short stories. And that is Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho. This, like I said, is a collection of interconnected stories about Fiona and Jane who grow up together in LA and their best friends. And we follow them through their girlhood. And then one of them moves to New York and the other one stays behind in California. So we follow them in separate stories. And it says we follow them through their growing up and sort of adolescent angst and then their connections as they are entering womanhood and as friendship becomes like more distant and fractured and the complexities that female friendship has to offer. So I think this sounds like the sort of thing I would absolutely adore. So I have this one on pre-order already and I cannot wait to pick it up. And then on the 20th of January I have two collections I'm really excited for. The first one being Five Tuesdays in Winter by Lily King. Lily King has several novels out. I don't know if this is her first short story collection. I think it might be. I've read two of her novels, Euphoria, which I thought was fantastic, and Writers and Lovers, which is her most recent novel. And I read that back in, I think, 2020, when I was at sort of like my peak of struggling with um, my pain that was later diagnosed as a functional neurological disorder. And so I really enjoyed the novel, but one thing I struggled with is that the main character has lots of symptoms of pins and needles and pain um, because of anxiety she's having about lots of stresses in her life and it felt too closely linked to what I was going through and like lots of the physical descriptions of the pain were like precisely what I experienced and I found it a bit you'd think I'd find that um really relatable but I found it a bit claustrophobic and I think it perhaps lessened my enjoyment of a novel that I would otherwise have loved um, but I really appreciate her writing style I really like the way she explores characters so I'm really interested to see how she does that in a short story collection. And the next one coming out on the 20th of January is Send Nudes by I think you say it's Saba Sams but I need to well I, I have checked and I haven't been able to find out but um yeah I will find out when the book is released I'm sure there'll be some interviews with the author. I think this author is around my age perhaps younger so I think I'll find this book really relatable and nostalgic in maybe good ways but maybe also not so good ways and um, because this is another collection that focuses on girlhood it says it immerses us in its contradictions and complexities growing up too quickly yet yeah, not quickly enough taking possession of what one can while being taken possession of succumbing to societal pressure but also orchestrating that pressure. These young women are feral yet attentive, fierce yet vulnerable, exploited yet exploitative. It says it threads between clubs at closing time, pub toilets, drenched music festivals and beach holidays. 
and the author is from let me double check where she's from if it says she um lives in london and i think like i said she's around my age so yeah i just think it'll be really interesting to read about a, a group of young girls growing up in england around the time i was growing up in england so i'm really hoping to love this one and then have a new um author to follow as she brings out hopefully some some novels and other collections the next one is coming out the 2nd of february and it's published by tin house who are one of my favorite us based indie publishers and that is lesser known monsters of the 21st century by kim fu now kim fu is an author who i followed and um, wanted to pick up all of their books but never got around to picking up any of them so i think this might be the first one i pick up now i feel a bit trepidations about this one because um, quite a few years ago I used to if you watch my channel for for a long time you probably know this I used to read a lot of sort of fabulous magical realist books um, particularly short story collections I loved weird and wonderful short story collections and then I sort of stopped reading th those sort of books and then I've had a long enough gap that my reading taste has changed enough that I have this sort of fear that I've been scared to acknowledge that I wouldn't enjoy those sort of books anymore so I haven't reread any of them I haven't picked up similar sounding books and this is one such book that I think I'm going to test my theory on and hope that I'm wrong and I still love these type of books because this is the sort of book that back in like 2015 I would have been insanely excited to pick up um, so this is a, a weird and wonderful collection and we follow a girl who grows wings on her legs um, we follow uh, a bug infested house which becomes a Kafka-esque nightmare. It says each story builds a new world all its own. A group of children steal a haunted doll. A runaway bride encounters a sea monster. A vendor sells toy boxes that seemingly control the passage of time. And an insomniac is seduced by the Sandman. It says this collection wrestles with themes of death and technological consequence, guilt and sexuality, and unmasks the contradictions that exist within us all. So yeah, I could absolutely love this one and it could sort of reintroduce me to all the weird and wonderful books I used to love or it could prove to me perhaps that I just don't enjoy that sort of thing anymore so we shall see and have you read any of Kim Fu's previous books um, particularly I think there's one called Camp Forevermore or something like that which I like The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore which I like the sound of have you read it and then we skip ahead to april because there aren't any short story collections that i'm anticipating in march but let me know if you think i'm missing any and we have heartbreak by chelsea beaker coming out on the 5th of april now i was interested in this author's previous book or first novel which was called godshot and i heard mixed reviews that the premise of it sounded like a book that i would completely love so let me know if you've read that one and what you thought of it and then I saw she had a short story collection coming out. I love the cover, I think it's brilliant. And then I saw that it was blurred by T. Kira Madden, who wrote the sort of collection of essays that formed a memoir called Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls, which I thought was absolutely fucking phenomenal and one of the best books I've ever read. So pretty much anything she blurbs and says that she thinks it like focuses on girlhood really well. Are you sensing a theme here in what I'm interested in? I want to pick up. And T. Kira Madden said about this collection, Chelsea Beaker shies from nothing in these raucous ecstatic stories rendering the best and worst of all of us in tales as devastating as they are side-splittingly funny. Suspenseful as hell, thrumming with heat and humanity, Beaker brings her signature acoustical grace and pyrotechnic prose to this unforgettable landscape. Every page flickers with desire. For fans of Larry McMurtry's Wild West and Mary Gateskill's Prickled Darkness, Heartbroke is a place all its own, the white hot in between. And obviously this is set in California. We follow lots of girls and women and yeah. It just sounds brilliant and I would definitely be pre-ordering this one as well. And the next one is Nobody Gets Out Alive by Lee Newman. This comes out on the 12th of April and I'm unsure about the cover again. I think I like the colours, I think, but I think that the footprint is a bit twee. What are your thoughts? I'm going to read you one line from the blurb of this and that's all I had to read to want to read this to be honest. Set in Newman's home state of Alaska, Nobody Gets Out Alive is a collection of dazzling, courageous stories about women struggling to survive, not just grizzly bears and charging muse, muse, <laughs> moose, but the raw, exhausting legacy of their marriages and families. I mean, come on. Set in Alaska, wild and raw and focused on women's experiences. Tick, tick, tick will be pre-ordered. Then on the 14th of April, we have The Last Suspicious Holdout by Lady Hubbard. I think that's a really cool um, title, I was gonna say. Um, and this sounds excellent. I haven't read her previous book, I don't know if she has more than one, called The Rib King, which I heard really good things about. 
Um, these are interlocking short stories, again, so if that's something you're interested in, this features that. It says it explores relationships between friends, families and strangers in a black neighbourhood over 15 years. It says um, this is spanning the time, a period during which the black middle class expanded while stories of welfare queens, crack babies and super predators abounded in the media. Characters spotlighted in one story reappear in another, providing a stunning testament to the enduring resilience of black people as they navigate the post-racial period. I think that sounds excellent. And yeah, I like um, short story collections that are linked through some characters knowing one another as well as more strongly linked, um, like in the one I mentioned at the start about the two friends. And then the one I think with probably the best cover is Buffalo is the New Buffalo by Chelsea Vowell. This comes out on the 26th of April from Arsenal Pulp Press, who are another great indie press. Chelsea Vowell is a Métis author, and this is a book that explores being a Métis through speculative fiction that blends like classical stories and more contemporary stories. Um, and it says that indigenous futurism seeks to discover the impact of colonisation, remove its psychological baggage and recover ancestral traditions. Um, so the examples of the sort of stories are a Métis man is gored by a radioactive bison, gaining super strength but losing the ability to remem be remembered by anyone not related to him by blood. Virtual reality teaches transformation, foxes take human form and wreak havoc on hearts, buffalo roam free and beings grapple with the thorny problem of healing from colonialism. So yeah, I think that all sounds fantastic. Um, and I've read some really great indigenous authored short story collections in the last couple of years. So yeah, they're where it's at and I definitely wanna carry on reading more. And then on the 7th of June, we have Sleeping Alone by Rue Freeman. This is published by Grey Wolf Press, who are again, one of my favorite indie publishers. You can see that indie publishers pick up some great short story collections. This one sounds amazing, um, it spans Maine to Sri Lanka, Dublin to Philadelphia, and it says the author calls Sri Lanka and America home. And this book asks one of the fundamental questions of our time, what is the toll of feeling foreign in one's land to others or even to oneself? A cast of misfits, young and old, single and coupled, even entire family units confront startling changes wrought by difficult circumstances or harrowing choices. And as I said earlier, I really like books that explore immigration and what it means to feel like it says foreign in one's own home and feeling like you don't belong I think those themes can be really well explored in short story collections in particular so I'm very excited to get to this one as well and then another one with a beautiful cover we have Rainbow Rainbow by Lydia Conklin this one comes out on the 9th of June and it obviously sounds fantastic it says this celebrates humour, darkness and depth of emotion of the queer and trans experience that's not typically represented, liminal or uncertain identities, queer conception and queer joy. Um, and for example, it says uh, we follow a young lesbian who tries to have a baby with her lover using an unprofessional sperm donor and a high powered rainbow coloured cocktail. In another, a fifth grader explores gender identity by dressing as an ox instead of a matriarch for a class Oregon trial reenactment. We, meanwhile, a non-binary person on the eve of top surgery dangerously experiments with an open relationship during the height of the COVID crisis. It says the author takes their readers to a meeting of a queer feminist book club and to a convention of trans teenagers, revealing both the dark and lovable sides of their characters. The stories in Rainbow Rainbow will make you laugh and wince sometimes at the same time. So again, very excited to read this one. We'll be pre-ordering it. I mean, I'll pretty much be pre-ordering all of these, so. And then finally we have one book that does actually tip into the second half of the year because this comes out on the 5th of July again from Tin House and that is Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. So it says that this is set in a native community in Maine. Night of the Living Res is a riveting debut collection about what it means to be Penobscot in the 21st century and what it means to live, to survive and to persevere after tragedy. It says it examines the consequences and merits of inheritance and it has great reviews from lots of authors I've enjoyed like Tony Jensen, Tommy Orange, Therese Marie Malhart. So yeah, very excited for this one. Um, an example of the type of stories it features, it says a boy unearths a jar that holds an old curse which sets into motion his family's unravelling. A man while trying to swindle some pot from a dealer discovers a friend passed out in the woods his hair frozen into the snow. A grandmother suffering from Alzheimer's projects the past onto her grandson and thinks he is her dead brother come back to life. And two friends, inspired by Antiques Roadshow, attempt to rob the tribal museum for valuable root clubs. Uh, this is an unforgettable portrayal of a native community and it marks the arrival of a standout talent in contemporary 
fiction. So obviously it sounds brilliant, as do all of these. So let me know if you have any of these on your pre-order list or if you've added them because of this video. And also let me know if you think there's some short story collections that I should have on my pre-order list for the first half of 2022 because clearly I need more to pre-order. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.